If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The topic of the day, which is planting garlic. Now, Holly, you say that garlic is the stupidest, easiest crop to grow. That's what I say. I say garlic is stupid, easy to grow, but it really impresses a lot of people when you harvest this garlic and your coworkers and whatnot, and they're like, you know, that's amazing. I, I'm, so I wonder where I the, the, the a, misconception a came from that it seems to be a difficult crop. I think which it's because people do it wrong, and that well, happened we, to we, us. Yeah, we've done it wrong. Yeah, we definitely had that issue, uh, I think, was it two years in a row? Uh, two years in a row. Uh, we'll, we'll tell the story. Uh, but there, let, let's talk about, there's fall garlic and there's spring garlic. We plant fall garlic, and that's predominantly what many northern gar- garlic growers plant because garlic needs a number of cold hours in order to produce the bulb to develop correctly. If you do not have those cold hours, your bulb doesn't v- develop correctly, and you do not have a good garlic bulb uh, that that grows. Right, so... There's two well, types of there's garlic. There's two yeah. types of garlic. There's hard neck so- and soft neck. So soft neck basically is, we grow hard neck, uh-huh. and there's a stem that go- grows through it. Um, and then you get the scapes, and then it turns like a yellowish-brownish color after you cut the scapes off to, to know when to harvest it. Soft neck um, doesn't have that stem that grows through it. it it's soft have, neck, and then the top falls, falls over, over. Like an onion, right. Yeah, when it's ready to harvest. And it doesn't have the scapes. Well, let's talk about a, a, another variety that's not necessarily a variety. It's called elephant garlic. Well, what, why can't I, can, can I grow elephant garlic and get the same characteristics as gar- hard neck and soft neck? Sure. So elephant garlic is not, it's related to the onion family. It's, it's uh, uh, the leek family. Leek family. Leek family. It's basically like. I don't know, probably closer to a shallot, mm-hmm. but it's not true garlic. It grows like a spring onion. Right. You plant in the spring, harvest it when in the fall, and you're done. When we're growing the fall garlic, we're planting it, and we've planted it since we figured out how to do this right, first Saturday in October, and we harvest it typically last week in June, second uh, up to the second week in July. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of real estate that is tied up with this particular plant. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a nine-month at least commitment, so you have to keep that in mind but the good thing is is that once you harvest it you can put things behind it like fall crops and you don't necessarily have to utilize a portion of your garden to grow this you can put it in your rose bed your flower bed incorporate it into your uh landscape so you can have other places to grow tomatoes peppers eggplants in the in the summer months so okay so let's talk about where we get the seed and the seed stock for our garlic we just don't go down to the the big box store and pick it up no. We've made this mistake. Right. So if you buy garlic from the grocery store and want to grow it, it's probably not going to grow. Or now, if you buy it from tiny. Outpost or Beans and Barley, there it's a specific variety, hard neck or soft neck. There, there may be some actual uh, horticultural names tied to that particular item. Then you're okay because you need to know, you know it, it, the typical big box store, grocery store garlic is what? Uh, it's hydroponically grown. Right. In Asia. In Asia somewhere. Shipped over. And shipped over. So it's it's not... Generic. Yeah, it's basically generic. It's not... Uh, like heirloom vegetables, gar- like true garlic is more of like an heirloom type thing that you it's grow. It's the equivalent of eating a tomato from the grocery store and growing it in your backyard. Same thing. Eating garlic from the grocery store and growing it in your backyard. It's that total realm of flavor and uh, intensity of nutrients. Right. So... Um, yeah, so you, that's one thing, and then we plant ours in mid-October, or, well... Yeah, first Saturday in October, Saturday as, October. I, as I spoke about. And, and the, then... And the reason why is what? Is because it has time before that first freeze comes you, to become established. Right, you want the roots to become established, and then it can go into dormancy and does its overwintering thing. And there's still a little growth that occurs even when it's negative four degrees, but you wanted to get it established. You're planting this two to four inches in depth... Uh, and based on your conditions, if you've got loose tilt and like a raised bed, four inches is fine. Normal, uh, traditional garden, two and a half, three inches, you're okay with that. Right. You, and, and you don't have to mulch it. No. And when you plant it, you want to, you, yeah, that's another thing is that we, we mulched ours too heavy. We put like a foot of mm-hmm. straw or six to eight inches of straw on top. And that caused an issue too because it was too much mulch and it was too heavy. So you can, you can mulch it with leaves. That's fine. Or just like a thin layer of straw if you want, but too much is not good. We've chosen, we, we didn't straw, uh, we made two, two years of mistakes 
then we didn't mulch, and it turned out fine. Now, there are, you, you got the cloves, and then you've got garlic seed, which is the so, better alternative here to go with. You want to do the cloves, because I think when you do the garlic seed, it takes you, uh, I think it's, what, seven, five, six years? Twenty? No, 24 months. Oh, 24 months. 24 months to get Oh, a, yeah, two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. 24 months to get... of how it, it has to be established. So when you get your garlic bulbs, whether from the farmer's market, local places, there's a lot of Wisconsin locations in which sells garlic to be planted. You want to get that as soon as possible because they sell out every year. You want to find, uh, you want to break open the, open the, clo- the bulbs about a couple of days before you're intending to plant because you want the largest clove you can possibly get out of that bulb. And based on the variety, you may have five cloves, or you may have 15 cloves in that bulb. It just, it's variety. It, d- d- it depends. So you want to find the largest cloves to plant for your fall garlic because that will give you the most best chance to have a large bulb. Large cloves equal large bulbs in the spring. Right. And this is important now because if you planted garlic for the first time last spring, you've harvested it, you're letting it cure. Now you can look at it before you start to to consume it, you can look and find the largest bulbs. Uh, yeah, you want you don't want to bust them open until about a couple of days before you're intending to plant because they do dry out and they lose the viability, and you need that that good seed stock to mm-hmm. get the the plants established before the first hard freeze. We want to plant them about eight to ten inches apart, rows being eighteen inches width, because these will get three up to three foot tall. Uh, the hard neck garlic, which I'm not familiar with soft neck because we've never grown it. Uh, we've had perfect success with the, the hard neck. We grow about 70 to 120 bulbs a year. And you want to plant that, again, 8 inches to 10 inches, plant to plant, and then row with 18 inches. The book will, some of the books will say go every 12 inches, but if you go 10 inches, we found no, no, no problem. And if you go 8 inches in a 20 foot row, you can get a few more cloves in the ground. Now, before we plant the cloves, let's reverse back for a moment. We want to give the cloves the most opportune chance to to germinate as we can. So we want to hydrate them. And we can do this with a variety of different liquids. So you can use anything from just water to compost tea to weed tea. Any of these are good options. Uh, We've always used Mupu Tea from Authentic Haven Brand, one of the sponsors of the program. Even before they were a sponsor of the program, we used it. You're wanting to hydrate it for 24 hours. Then you go, you're going to ho- go, go ahead and plant. The reason why we hydrate it is to basically infuse the in- internal portions of that clove with nutrients, with ho- moisture, so it can begin to sprout almost immediately once it goes in the ground. So now let's fast forward. It's been, we've planted in o- first Saturday in October. We haven't mulched it. We've let it be. It has sprouted three or four inches. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. So it comes, early March, mid-March, and you begin to see these plants erupt out of the ground and begin to grow vertically very, very rapidly. That also is the time we see a lot of weeds start to develop. So there's a couple of things you want to do. You want to top dress or feed your plants. You don't want to feed the garlic in the fall because you don't want to get it so uh, energized. Like you, you don't want to boost it in the yeah. fall. Right. You just so you want can to feed it now. You can feed it in the spring. And then if you haven't mulched it, you can mulch it. You would want to you know, remove those weeds carefully around it. Don't pull too hard because it's still, it's still developing there. And then you would want to mulch around it after you feed it. And that will help suppress some of the weeds. Well, let's, let's, you, I, I use the term called top dressing. For people who may be new to that term, well, it's what typically is, called side dressing. Okay, um, and side dressing means that you're adding fertilizer to the soil next to the garlic. So, you, you liquid can, or granular or compost or what? Yeah, you can use liquid or granular or compost, whatever it is. Um, if it's granular, you want to mix it in gently. Liquid, you obviously would pour it into the soil, and then compost, you could just simply place on top. Okay, uh, and then you would put your mulch over whatever you do, and, and then you leave it alone mm-hmm. until you begin to see scapes developing. Right, so scape is basically, you'll see it develop at the top. It has like this little nodule on it. That's good. That was what, and then it kind of curls usually. Um, and so what you would do is you just trim that off. When you see those scapes develop, you go to where the ju- the junction of that scape is with the plant. You just trim them off. And the scapes are edible. They're really good. They're just garlicky, like a more mild garlic flavor, 
but they're delicious. Um, for people who grow abundance of hard neck garlic, restaurants will pay a premium because it is a, a, a delicacy right, for two weeks a year. Yeah, and, and it's a timely and, thing. And you can eat this. You can make garlic pesto. I mean, very. you have to like garlic a lot in order to make garlic pesto with it. You can stir fry it, just eat it raw mm-hmm. and or grill it on the, uh, you know, grill it. So Add it to your eggs. Add it to your eggs. Uh, one, you, you can play with it as if you would uh, onion chives. That, that type of thing yeah. Uh, yeah. to a certain level. So once we've removed, and this is typically May, early, uh, yeah, probably me, late like May, or, yeah, mid-May. Mid to end of May, early Is May. when we remove the scapes. You, you'll you know. Right. Yeah. And then, we, and then it takes then about... Then we wait... You take about two to three weeks, and then it, and then you wait, and then you'll see the leaves of the garlic start to brown or yellow. This is for hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic, the plant will fall over to indicate when it is ready because there is no structure of the stem to keep it upright even if the plant dies or when the plant dies. And you don't have to worry about that, the scapes of the soft neck either. Right. Um, so, yeah, so you'll know either the, the stem will fall over or you'll have the um, the leaves. And then you want to harvest it and cure it. Curing is a process in which we hang it or set it somewhere, not pile it in a big pile, to allow the top portion, we leave it all intact, allow the top portion to dry, and we set it vertically so the top juices in the green can gravitate down to the bulb to infuse more flavor into it. Uh, we can use it right away, called green garlic, not a problem with that, but we want to do it, we want to cure it. And we want to put it in a place in where it's got good air circulation. It's not in a plastic bag because then you have a bag full of garlic slime because it can't breathe. Right. So something like um, a, po- a basket, a porous basket, um, even like a cardboard box, as long as you don't pile it up too much, you want something that can have some... You, you can hang it in the basement. Yeah, you can do that I too. mean, we grow uh, 100 bulbs, so most people may only grow a fraction of that. Uh, but that, that's how you do garlic, and, and then you store it in a cardboard box somewhere out of direct sunlight, somewhere cool, and you can get about eight to nine months out of the actual bulb there. Uh, again, we harvest it, and we save the cloves, the largest cloves uh, for the following planting. But that's essentially how you grow uh, garlic. Now, we want to harvest it when the plant is beginning to die back. Yeah, I've got questions. Can I? When do I need to harvest my garlic? It's been dead for a while now. Can I just leave it? Well, Two problems with that. One, if you leave it in the ground and it's dead, there's going to be a lot of moisture when it rains or when you water or whatever the case is that can uh, in, increase the likelihood of, of getting moisture into the clove, into the bulb, and beginning to rot. Secondly, if you leave it in too long, that them cloves will begin to sprout underneath the ground, mm-hmm. and then you've got a cluster of garlic stalks, and you're not utilizing the potential of what you could if you would have harvested it and used it for in the kitchen or planting later that year. Right. So that's how, in a very quick uh, aspect on how to grow garlic. If you've never grown it, absolutely you should try to grow it. Uh, with uh, It's very, very easy, and we've got a number of videos on the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, that can help you in great detail and show you exactly how we do it. Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com for full and in-studio video and podcast replay of Season 1. Season 2 underway and added weekly. Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.